They were going to have a tomato variety trial here at the Bixby Vegetable Research Station this year, but there's been some problems with our tomatoes. As you can see here, we've got some plants that uh, are having some problems, and some of you may also have had tomatoes that have shown these symptoms. Well, here to uh, tell us about what's going on is uh, extension plant pathologist, Dr. Jan John Damacone. It's good to be here, Steve. Welcome to the program. Thank so, you. John, what, what, what are we looking at here? What's, what's going on? Well, th we've, we've l recently learned that this is a virus disease of tomatoes called uh, beet curly top virus. And it causes a severe stunting of the plant, uh, twisting of the leaves, and the very pronounced purple uh, veins on these leaves. These plants are what we call systemically infected with a virus. That means the virus got into the plant multiplied in the plant and it was transported through the uh, conductive tissue in the plant so throughout the plant throughout the whole plant now. throughout the whole plant and this plant will stop growing and eventually die and this virus unfortunately is very hard to test for using conventional uh, virus testing methods so we sent plants off had them tested for uh, about 20 different viruses and they they came back negative. This went on for a couple of years. Uh, the problem uh, increased some years, was very low uh, other years, but this year it's been uh, widely uh, distributed across the state. And you've, you've had some uh, growers who've had really, really bad problems this year, correct? Out in western Oklahoma, uh, about 50 to 80 percent loss of plants that showing these types of symptoms. Of course, these plants won't produce um, particularly the ones that get infected very early in the year, don't produce any tomatoes at all. Uh, there is a farmer, uh, we're here at Bixby, about six miles down the road that had a, uh, uh, about an 80% loss in uh, heirloom tomatoes. So, um, And outside of Oklahoma City we have it. Uh, apparently it's scattered all over western Oklahoma. Okay. So uh, how, how is the disease spread? What's, what's the... Uh, well, this particular virus is, is spread by one species of leafhopper. It's called the beet leafhopper. Mm -hmm. And this leafhopper uh, feeds, on the, feeds on an infected plant for a very brief period of time, 15, 20 seconds. He acquires this virus and remains infective for his whole life. So from then on, whatever plant this leafhopper lands on becomes, uh, when he samples it to mm. determine whether he want, this is a suitable plant to feed on, he probes into the plant with his mouth parts and it actually acts like a, a hypodermic syringe and inoculates plants. Every one he samples will become inoculated. If the plant's susceptible to the virus, like tomato, it'll show symptoms like this. There are other plants that he lands on that he samples that aren't susceptible to the virus and even though he infects the plant, the virus isn't able to uh, multiply inside the plant like it can in tomatoes. Okay, so the, uh, the leaf hopper, hoppers don't even really like tomatoes, is that right? That's right, they, uh, they visit the tomatoes, they sample it, realize they don't like it and fly off. At least that's the current thinking. Right. So uh, it, it really wouldn't do any good to try to control the insect? probably true because uh, many virus diseases that are spread in this manner are, uh, are uh, it only takes a few seconds for the, for the uh, insect to inoculate the plant when he samples it. Now, if you spray the plant with an insecticide, the insect normally has to ingest some of the insecticide sure. or be exposed to it, get, get it on its body parts before it uh, gets sick and dies. Well, by that time, it's already infected the plant by sampling it. And then, oftentimes, these insecticides will make the insect their act as nerve poisons for the insect. So he'll, he'll get jumpy, and he'll start hopping around and actually infecting more plants before he dies. So it's, it's kind of a hard uh, thing to get growers to understand that if it's spread by a leaf hopper, why can't you just control the leaf hopper? But this is a unique case. situation with these uh, viruses and insect vectors. Most okay. times, the only thing, uh, the only uh, result of spraying an insecticide is you might make the disease worse. That's that's that's, that's going to be tricky. Very to unfortunate. Try to control them. Well, I know there are uh, uh, going to be some problems for the large growers uh, trying to uh, control control the pest. But for the home 
home gardener uh, who just has uh, a few tomatoes or only wants to grow a few tomatoes in their garden, uh, what, what do you suggest uh, they do? Well, um, let me first say that we're not sure that it's going to be this bad every year. That's good. Uh, it, it may revert back to a plant here and there like it has in past years, or it may continue to get worse. We may be in a cycle. Uh, where these we have a lot of leaf hoppers around, and a lot of the leaf hoppers that we do, the beet leaf hoppers that we do have have mm -hmm. the virus. But if if we expect this disease to uh, be, be be an annual problem, one thing that can be done is the use of row covers. These okay. are remay cloth row covers. Um, you wouldn't want to use plastic because the uh, the plants would the temperature would get too sure. high under that plastic. Cook them under there. Right, but uh, these remay row covers, you would, would shape a hoop over the row and uh, lay this cover on and secure it with soil. And then probably when the plants are about a foot or when they start to grow through the row cover or sure. reach the top, you could take the row cover off. We noticed here at Bixby that most of these plants became infected uh, early in the season. You can see here in some of these cages where there's no plants, those were removed early in the year. Uh, other things they've done out west is they claim that, uh, at least in garden situations, uh, shaded plants uh, are less attractive to these leaf hoppers. So if you plant them next to a fence or maybe perhaps uh, corn, plant some corn in between and and get corn up high, sure. plant it early. Uh, you can get corn grown in Oklahoma probably in late February, early March. It may freeze back, but sometimes it may not, and that might be an approach. Another thing is to uh, get dense, dense planting, closely uh, spaced plants. These leaf hoppers are attracted to widely spaced, isolated plants, very clean, tilled ground like we have here. That's something that really draws in the uh, leaf hopper. The results one could expect from trying to control this disease would be greatest using a row cover. I think okay. that would be without a doubt. Okay. Well, hopefully we won't we won't have the problem next year. Right. But uh, if we're expecting it, uh, just keeping those row covers over the plants and just not allowing those little leaf hoppers to get in there and bite them. Right. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Sure, Dr. Damico. Beet curly top virus also affects other plants, including peppers. 